Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about thoracic outlet syndrome. And I've done earlier videos, so you might find them of interest. Uh, that was done in my other clinic. So this one is going to be more on a PowerPoint presentation. So if you think about the thoracic outlet, it means that structures from the thorax are coming out, because obviously we've got structures within the thorax that come in, like the spinal cord. So the structures that come out would be mainly the brachial plexus, which comes from C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. And also it comes out with the subclavian artery. It comes out between the anterior fibers of the scalene and then the mid fibers of the scalene. And it comes over the uh, first rib. And then the clavicle, as I show you, it will go underneath the clavicle. So the words syndrome, thoracic outlet syndrome, if you were to define it, it would simply mean uh, compression of the neurovascular bundle. And the neuro is the brachial plexus, and the vascular is more likely the subclavian artery, even though the subclavian vein could be involved. Even though the vein doesn't physically penetrate through the thoracic outlet space. Yeah, as I'll show you the picture now. So have a look at this picture anatomically. Just have a look at that. And you can see that you've got the anterior fibers of the scalene, the mid fibers, then you've got the brachial plexus. So this forms a triangle between the two. It's called the interscalene triangle along here. And then you've got the subclavian artery that comes out. First rib, where the anterior, anterior mid fibers attach onto here. And also you've got the uh, subclavian vein along here and the clavicle. So these are the structures on there that I've just gone through. All right, yeah, let's just go back so you can see the structures in here. And then these structures will form the interscalene triangle. So if you have a look in here, you can see that we've got this triangle forming between the anterior mid fibers of the scalene and the nerves and the artery could get compromised within this space along that sort of area in here. Now, if you have thoracic outlet, then there's potentially many causes of, and one of them, you can't really see the picture, but um, if you have a thickening of the anterior fiber, we actually call it sclenus anticus syndrome. So if there is a thickening of the anterior fiber, then that would reduce the space where these two structures will come out. You might not hear of it very often, but um, potentially, but the scalenes, because they attach to the first and second rib, they're involved in inspiration. And if they are particularly active, you might find they just become chronically tight. If your posture is not the best and you've got forward head posture, then even this thoracic outlet has been shown to be reduced by 30%. So it's not about treatment of a scalene because you have to be careful because the phrenic nerve will, will pass directly over these. And, um, and then you might find it's just so sensitive to start digging in. So you just one has to be very careful in how, how you would treat this. Um, and it's about looking at the global picture rather than just looking at the picture here. So you, you can do what we call the Anson's test, where you can palpate the pulse, take the arm out. Yeah, I'd have to do it on a patient. Yeah, and then ask a patient to breathe in and look towards, and then that could give you a positive sign for that. There are other causes of, um, like this one in here. So this is the costoclavicular syndrome. And you can't really see this, so let's just go the closer picture yeah, along here. So if this is the clavicle, and this is the artery and the, well, the nerves, and then the vein. So if the clavicle is back and down, then you might find like a military posture um, or a policeman on parade. So if he's in a constant or she in that position in here, then you might find, and you're there for many hours on parade, then you might find, you might get perceived tingling, altered sensations to the arm. Okay, so again, it's normally a positional thing. But let's just go back again and you know, have a look at the space in here. So you've got the clavicle, but also uh, you can't really see it because it's quite rare. You can also, within this space, where this is the first rib which comes off the transverse process of T1, but you might find you can't see it, but C7 could have an extra projection and that could en en penetrate through in here. So you have something called a, a cervical rib. Uh, the first rib 
if a scale is a pretty active or if a first rib is maybe uh, mechanically fixed up, they call it like an inspirated rib, then that too can also cause compression typically of a lower brachial plexus, i.e. the C8 and T1, and a patient might get symptoms following like an ulnar nerve pathway. So we mentioned the scalenus and anticus syndrome. We mentioned the first rib that could be inspirated or elevated. We mentioned the clavicle that could be depressed yeah, on the, the neurovascular bundle. Um, we mentioned um, the cervical rib, an extra rib that could be coming down. And one more thing that it could be, could be related to the, the pectoralis minor. So where the brachial plexus and the vascular bundle come under and they go under the pec minor, if someone says that when their arm is in the air, let's say an electrician working on site, and then they get symptoms in the arm like altered temperature changes, uh, you might find they get um, altered paresthesia, yeah, tingling to sort of sensations because of the position of the arm, then that might be a pectoralis minor syndrome. So there's five major causes of thoracic outlet syndrome, uh, as we've briefly mentioned. Uh, a lot of time it's positional, so maybe the shoulders, yeah, positioning, maybe the arm position, maybe even the neck, the look over, yeah, and then it might compromise. Yeah, they might even take a deep breath in, and that first rib might give you some altered sensation to the arm. So if they do have changes, then it might be worth considering having a look at the thoracic outlet. And we've mentioned these already. Um, let me just go to that one, not the quickest. Uh, if you have any questions on thoracic outlet, I do have other talks on it where I explain it slightly different with a bit more involved, uh, then feel free to get in contact. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the talk.